How do I find a buyer for my business? Hi, it's Bob and Sean again with another of the How Do I series for business owners. Sean, as a business owner, how do I find a buyer for my business? Great question. That's a pretty complex question, actually. And it depends on what kind of buyer you're seeking. So again, let's sort of let's sort of expand the definition of buyer. And let's expand the options that you might have as a seller. So when we ask this question about how can I find a buyer, a lot of the default position is how do I find a third party buyer, right? So in other words, how would I put my business on the market, prep it, put it on the market, have it be represented either by myself or by a kind of broker or investment banker, depending on how big your business is. Uh, and then, you know, what concerns might I have about confidentiality, about the process itself, right? Now, if I put it out in the open market, so to speak, even if I'm selective, there's always a chance that information is going to get out and I'm going to have to manage that. It could be harmful to the business. So, but we also have, uh, how do I find a buyer internally? within the business. Maybe it's a family member or a partner or an, or employees, subset of employees are through an employee stock ownership program or whatever it might be. The business has to transfer more value than risk in all of those situations. It must be prepared to transfer more value than risk. And until you can do that, you're not going to find a buyer at all. Nobody's going to be interested. So there is sort of the decision about what kind of buyer you're seeking right? Is it a larger company? Are you trying to merge with an equal? Is it, you know, a, uh, uh, an individual, a family, something like that? Because that's going to dictate the way that you go about it. So how do I find a third party buyer that's a bigger company, right? So I'm, I'm most likely going to hire an investment banker if that's the road I'm going down. And I'm going to prep the company, I'm going to put together an offering memorandum, I'm going to internally do diligence it before I put it on the market. I'm going to run through a whole process of buyer identification, selection, reaching out to those buyers, providing a teaser after they've signed an NDA. It's a big deal. That's what we're saying. It's a big deal. A lot of people might misinterpret that process as being relatively straightforward. Advertise the opportunity. Somebody walks up, uh, contacts you, expresses interest, and then you sell it like a house. But it's not that way unless it's a small business. And then you can have, you can have, honestly, some... Um, similarities to actually selling a piece of real estate. It doesn't have to be all that complex. So there are lots of ways to find the buyer proactively. And there are lots of ways to position the company not so subtly so that the buyers come to you. And it just depends on the way that you want to do it. It's a significant investment of time, effort, and money. We always tell our clients, if you're going to actually go, go and sell your business, Ex expect by the end of that, that process to have spent two hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand dollars between advisor fees, accountants, representatives, attorneys, and success fees that you may pay to investment bankers or representatives in one way or another. So it's not a cheap process, but going through it, going through a proactive sales process, can actually increase the price of your company competition, which may be valuable to you. Well, it also keeps you from being distracted from the day-to-day. -day. Having a representative you... certainly does, right? And that's a big issue for owners, I think. It, it's hard to underestimate the amount of distraction and hair pulling and annoyances that the seller owner faces when they are peppered with all of these paper requests for paper, requests for information when you're getting into the due diligence process. It can be totally overwhelming. You still have a business to run. So why not build a good team around you that can actually help you with that process and have, uh, have experienced negotiating partners who can drive price at the negotiating table. They know how to pull those levers. They know how to make the case. The business price is worth the investment that it will get the, get the buyer what they want. That you got to have an experienced team around you if you're, if you're talking about 10, 20, 30 million dollars or more it's not a DIY process, in my opinion. I've seen a lot of failure points, unfortunately, when owners have tried to do it themselves. Well, with that being said, look, if you want to learn more, you can find more answers to similar questions that Sean and I both hear regularly. You can go to rfnacademy.com or businessleaderspodcast.com. And you can find us both on LinkedIn, Sean Hutchinson or Bob Rourke. Thank you.